Alright, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. And uh, today I just wanted to uh, talk to you guys about uh, what's been going on in my life lately and all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to record this originally on my uh, my usual you know, Sony camcorder setup, but uh, I went to go turn it on and uh, the battery is pretty much dead. So I'm just like, ah, I gotta get these thoughts out like right now, but I want to sit around and wait for the camera to charge and then you know, go through all that crap, so I'm just like, well, you know, maybe I'll do it on my cell phone or something like that, I don't know. Uh, who knows if I even put this video up, actually, but, uh, uh, yeah, this video is just kind of a, uh, response of sorts to a Facebook post that I made on my personal account. And it was, you know, one of those typical, like, emo posts, you know, like, nobody understands me, you know, life is just meaningless and all that kind of crap and uh, it's just you know a lot of that just stems from you know not uh, fitting in I guess to you know society and just being aimless and disconnected yeah there, there's the word disconnected so uh, I just feel really uh, disconnected from everything really right now because you know ever since I, I moved back to to America and I've gone through a lot of major life-changing events you know all in you know pretty rapid succession you know I've went from you know leaving Japan to getting out of the Navy to starting college again for the first time in almost a decade all in relatively quick succession. And, you know, I thought that, you know, well, you know, I've, I've been through worse in the Navy, you know, I've learned to uh, adapt to stressful situations as best I can and kind of, you know, power through or whatever. But, uh, I don't know, man, like this week, I don't know what it is about this week in particular, <laughs> but uh, it's just been a lot of... Uh, Feelings have just been dredging up as of late. Just, you know, feelings of disconnect from everybody. And it's just one of those things where, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm not connecting with anybody anymore on a personal level. Because, you know, as, as much as I like to, you know, talk with you guys and be as open as... I can be with you guys, you know, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> you know, tell you every single detail of my personal life because, you know, it's not really all that interesting, you know, it's just, I'm just a regular dude, you know, trying to get by in this world, but, uh, you know, I try to be as open as I can about um, just what I'm going through and all that kind of stuff, and, uh, you know, that's the reason I'm making this video, you know, I could have just you know, deleted my email post and, you know, put up an, I'm okay, guys, really, you know, don't call the suicide hotline, really, <laughs> I'm okay, but, I don't know, I just, I don't like lying to people, because, you know, A, I'm not good at lying, and B, it's just dishonest, and it's a slap in the face to you guys, and I don't want to do that, so, I guess the reality is that I just... I don't feel connected with anybody anymore. You know, when I was out in Japan, there was a bit of disconnect, but um, I was close. I was close enough to Tokyo to where I could, you know, go up there for the weekend or whatever, and hang out with my uh, Tokyo-based friends or you know, friends that live relatively within the Tokyo area. Because Tokyo is kind of a a nice little hub, a little meetup hub. Because, you know, I got some friends who actually, like, live in Tokyo, Tokyo. And then I got some friends that live, you know, on, like, the outlier areas that are... It's not Tokyo, per se, but it's close enough to where they can zip on over. Kind of like what I did living in Yokosuka. So we'd always use, you know, uh, some place in Tokyo as, like, a little meetup area. Or, you know, when the weather is nice, you know, we go to Enoshima Beach and just chill out out there. So, you know... <laughs> Whatever works, right? But uh, the point is, um, when I first started doing YouTube in 2006, I was pretty much, you know, all alone. 
you know, YouTube was a relatively new platform. Uh, nobody really knew about it, you know, not, not, not back then anyway, you know, it didn't really start to gain, you know, large attention until the whole Lazy Sunday thing happened. And then people are like, oh, what's this YouTube thing? That's crazy. It's got Andy Sandberg and all that kind of stuff going on. And, uh, you know, then people put up cat videos and people getting punched in the junk. And then the first, first wave of vloggers came out and all that kind of stuff. But basically, the, the point is this. Um, when I first started doing YouTube, it was pretty much just me. You know, I, none of my friends did YouTube, no matter how much I tried to convince them to do it. And no matter how much I thought that they could do it, it just, you know, they weren't passionate about it like I was. You know, they weren't as driven about it as I, I was. So maybe they would do like a onesies, twosies, twosies video and that's pretty much it, you know. So I was much more uh, consistent with making videos than they were. And, you know, it is what it is. I'm not, you know, bad-mouthing them or anything like that. It's just, you know, I was just more passionate about it. So I decided to continue making YouTube videos, and uh, I was pretty much just in my own little bubble, and I didn't realize it at the time, but looking back, I just became more and more isolated in making YouTube videos, because, you know, none of my friends did the YouTube thing, and, you know, I'd try to bring a couple of them on, you know, for like little guest spots or something like that, but, uh, you know, they just weren't as into it as I, I was and am currently. So um, I just felt very alone in the YouTube uh, video making process. And it was pretty much, you know, a, a, like a one man team, you know. I'd have my online supporters, but as far as my, like my in real life supporters, you know, there were none, really. So um, I had to pretty much motivate myself to make the videos and to make the videos that I want to make wanted and, and continue to want to make. And, you know, that's pretty much it. So uh, when I moved out to Japan and, you know, got in contact with a lot of the uh, YouTubers and, you know, I hate using this word, but content creators. It's just such a, ugh, I hate it, but, you know, content creators. Then uh, I, I experienced a new, I guess, like feeling, I guess, of camaraderie and just like, you know, being around people who are into the same little weird niche hobby that you're into. And it's just, I guess the only way I can equate it to is like, if you're part of like an anime club or like a D and D club or some kind of nerdy club that, you know, everybody else ridicules or just doesn't understand. And, you know, if you say that, you know, I'm into Dungeons and Dragons or something like that. You know, a lot of people kind of look at you like, do you get like stuffed in lockers as a kid? Or like, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, but actually, you know, being around like-minded people who are into the same hobbies as you, you know, for me, you know, I'm not, <laughs> never really was a very social guy. I can be, but, you know, it has to be in the right context, I guess. But never, in general, being a very sociable guy, you know, and actually being around like-minded people who were into the same strange hobby that I was into was very refreshing. And it was just like, wow, and getting to see how they make videos and how they edit videos and all the kind of stuff was very refreshing. And it was just like, I'm not the only one out here. I'm not alone. You know, there are other people out there. But, um... And so that was uh, really refreshing for me and really helped me make the uh, the videos that I did while I was out in Japan. Even though, you know, they may or may not have, you know, actually been there at the time. But just the fact that, you know, I could go up there and talk, you know, kind of get all excited and be like, hey, you know, you know, the next week or the week after whatever, I'm going to release this video or oh, I'm thinking about going to this place and doing a video. What do you think? And, you know, they'd give me little tips or something like that if they've been there or you know, just whatever. It was just, it was just nice to be around like-minded people again and, uh, stuff like that. So, you know, when I moved back to America and I should clarify this, moved back to Ohio, you know, small town, Ohio, 
because, you know, America is such a big place and it's hard to generalize an entire country, especially a country as diverse as America, by just simply saying, you know, oh, when I came back to America, you know, nobody knows who I am and, you know, whatever. But uh, when I came back home to small town Ohio, like, it was such a depressing reality check for me because, um, obviously, I was out of the Navy, so I didn't have that connection anymore. I was um, out of Japan, so I didn't have that connection anymore. And all of my friends that I grew up with, you know, moved on without me. And <laughs> I'm not I'm not criticizing them. That that's that's their lives, man. But uh, the fact is, I had nobody, really. I mean, I had my family, and you know, thank God for them. But uh, nobody that I could relate to as far as my interests and my hobbies and stuff like that. I mean, I can't go to my mom and talk about making YouTube videos. You know, she'd just, she'd just be like, well, that's nice, Andy, but you know, I can't <laughs> talk to her about stuff like that. It's just, it's it's not her thing, man. So again, and you know, I'm not being ungrateful to my family. It's just, they can't relate to something like that. And, you know, obviously the whole life after the military service has its own challenges as well, you know, trying to fit in with the civilian sector and try to blend in and, you know, not stick out like a sore thumb and, you know, just, you know, <laughs> assimilate, I guess is the right word to say. You know, it has its own challenges as well. Um, Okay, that's my arm. I was wondering, like, I thought, like, my thumb was over the, the thing. Sorry, it was a random ADD moment. But anyway, so I just, I felt like I couldn't really relate to anybody anymore. And, you know, the only people that I could talk to were online. And, I mean, that's cool, you know, I get to see what they're up to and all that kind of stuff. But there is, there's still a disconnect with uh, talking to people online because it's just like, you know, you're not really talking to them, talking to them, you know, you're just sending messages and words. And it's not like you're, you know, there's a difference between like talking to somebody on the phone versus, you know, sitting down on a couch or something or at the table and talking with them. You know, there's that, you know, a lot of, a lot of, I guess, pretenses and stuff like that seem to you know, get pushed aside and it's a much more intimate uh, conversation when you're physically there and you can kind of drop the whole pretense. Because I know there's a lot of YouTubers out there who are afraid that their um, core audience w won't like them if they don't behave a certain way and, you know, you know, <laughs> call it whatever you want, but... Uh, it is what it is, I guess. And that's their choice, you know, it's whatever. But, you know, so they act a certain way in their videos. And, you know, when you actually sit down and talk with them, you know, because I'm a pretty chill guy. Anybody who's who's met me in real life, I'm really chill, laid back guy. You know, I don't, I'm, <laughs> I would like to think that I'm the same person in my videos that I am in real life. You know, maybe in the videos I'm a, I'm a bit more animated, but uh, maybe less, I don't know. <laughs> But uh, I like to present like a what you see is what you get sort of uh, thing, sort of attitude, I guess. You know, so that way, you know, if people meet me, they kind of know what they're getting themselves into, I guess. Um, and, you know, they're not going to walk away thinking, you know, whatever. But uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. This is all just kind of a stream of consciousness, you know, word barf sort of vlog, so... If you're looking for something a bit more organized in thought and structure, I apologize, but uh, this ain't one of those videos. So, um, but anyway, I just, I miss that connection, man, with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I'm coming down with something too, so that's why I'm stuffed up. I think uh, them kids at Western are getting me sick, fuckers. <laughs> anyway, um... I just want to, you know, say that I, I feel very disconnected from everybody, you know, you know, I feel disconnected from, you know, I thought that, you know, when I would come back 
here to America, to Ohio, to Michigan, wherever, um, that, you know, I, it would just be like, you know, when I was back home on leave, you know, for a couple of weeks or whatever, I'd be in town and I would say, you know, hey, you know, I'm in town for a couple of weeks, you know, when are you guys available? Let's go hang out, you know, kind of do what we used to do. Or, you know, we don't have to go do that kind of stuff. We just sit at home, chill, talk, catch up, whatever, you know. I'm a pretty flexible guy, you know. But when I came home to stay versus coming home on leave, you know, the reality is that, you know, they've moved on with their lives. And, you know, it's not like we can pick up from where we started again and you know I'm happy for them you know doing their own thing and stuff like that don't think that I'm being ungrateful or asking too much of my friends or whatever but it's just you know I figured you know well you know they got the nine to five jobs and some of them have families and kids and stuff like that so obviously you know get togethers are a bit more difficult when you have other people involved and stuff like that so you know we could go by two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months, three months. And nobody would send me a message saying, you know, hey, Andy, you want to go hang out? You know, I got this weekend free or whatever. And I'd just be sitting at home, you know, with my folks or locked in my room, it seems. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't forcibly locked. It was just I felt trapped there because, you know, I don't, I didn't have anybody to talk to really because, you know, when, when talking with my folks, it, it was always, always felt like I had to say the right things. Cause if I, if I said one little thing wrong, then they would just automatically jump on my ass and be like, Oh, you're a grateful little shit, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, just completely misunderstand what I was trying to say. And it's just, it's hard, man. You know, just being pretty much all you got, really. You know, I just, I miss that connection with people. And then, you know, I also thought, you know, going back to college, I would kind of pick up where I left off, you know, at Urbana, where, you know, with Urbana, I, I kind of cheated, I guess. I, I stumbled into it. You know, as far as my, uh, my group of friends, because, you know, my best friend was going there at the time. So, you know, I kind of fell in with his group of friends and, you know, they became my friends and stuff like that. So I already had a friend base set up by the time I actually started officially attending Urbana. Mm, excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. But, um, you know, it's just going back to Western, it's just like, I feel like I can't relate to anybody because, you know, it's not that they've changed, it's that I've changed. And I thought that I could, you know, I, I it's kind of weird, but I thought that, you know, when I left Urbana, I hit the pause button on my college life. And that, you know, everything that happened between May 2007 to January 2016, like, didn't exist, it didn't happen, and that I could just unpause in January and just pick pick up fr right from where I left off. But so many things have changed in that period of time. You know, I've changed, I've experienced so much, I've seen so many different uh, cultures, countries, cities. Um, I've got to experience a life that's far different from the norm. I guess you could say, and uh, come out the other side alive, which not a lot of people can say. So, you know, I got to be grateful for that at least, you know, so, but uh, it's just, uh, you know, once you leave that environment, you know, obviously a lot of stresses from that environment seem to fall away. And, uh, you know, the first uh, couple weeks that I was, um, back, it just felt like I was back on, you know, back home on leave, you know, it's just like, oh, cool, I don't have to deal with that, you know, ship bullshit anymore, I could just sit back, relax, you know, try to set up some, 
times to hang out with my friends and, you know, just do whatever, man. Because, you know, that's what I used to do when I'd come home on leave. And I figured <laughs> we'd just be able to do that more often. But, you know, I haven't seen my friends in almost a year. Like, I haven't physically seen them. I haven't hung out with them or anything. And, uh, you know, I figured, like, I don't know. It's just... It's such a sobering reality, I guess, to to think that, you know, you've hit the pause button, you know, while I was out doing my Navy thing, you know, out in Japan. But in reality, there is no pause button, you know. The world's going to continue, you know. The ride's going to continue whether or not you're on it. So, um... Just got to make the best of it, I guess. But, you know, right now for me, that's really hard because I don't have anybody out here, you know. And the people that I can talk to, I can't relate to with these kinds of problems. They just kind of see it as, oh, you're just being all depressed and weird, being strange. Stop it. Stop doing that. But you can't just turn it off like a switch. It doesn't work that way. You know? It, it doesn't. And so, you know, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if I want to continue making this video anymore. I, I've rambled on for like over 20 minutes. And uh, I don't know if you guys got anything from that. Um, if anything, it was somewhat beneficial for me to at least, you know, put out some word barf, you know, to help me out a little bit, I guess. I don't know. A little bit of talk therapy, I guess, whatever you want to call it. But, um, yeah. And uh, I'm going to try to be uh, to be a little more sociable out on campus. Um, I'm going to try to find some clubs, groups, whatever, you know, stuff that I'm interested in. And, you know, maybe that's it. Maybe I just need to uh, find a group of like-minded individuals, you know, to help, you know, to help me realize that I really am not alone in this world and that there are other people that are like me and I'm not just the odd man out. So, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. We'll see, you know, so anyway, that said, this is Anderson, sign for now, thanking you guys for uh, tuning into this rambly ass, uh, no direction video, and uh, as always, see you next time, bye guys.